The modulation index is a very important parameter for amp angle modulation, for a phase or a frequency modulation. This parameter is related with very important characteristics of an angle modulation. Because of this, in this video, we will introduce the definition of the modulation index and then we will analyze the effect of this parameter in the bandwidth of the angle modulations and in the signal to noise ratio of these modulations. The modulation index is defined from the maximum deviations. For a phase modulation, the maximum deviation is equal to the phase deviation constant Kp times the range of the modulating signal, the maximum value in modulus of this modulating signal. Typically, this is denoted by Cm. So we have Kp times Cm. For a frequency modulation, the maximum frequency deviation is defined similarly. The frequency deviation constant, Kf, times the range of the modulating signal, Kf times Cm. From the definition of these maximum deviations, now the modulation indexes are defined. For a phase modulation, the modulation index is equal to the maximum phase deviation, is equal to Kp times Cm. For the frequency modulation, the definition is slightly different. We have the ratio between the maximum frequency deviation and the bandwidth in hertz of the modulating signal. This is Kf times Cm divided by the bandwidth in hertz of the modulating signal. In angle modulations, the information, the modulating signal, is inside of the argument of a sinusoidal carrier, is in the angle of this sinusoidal carrier, in this term phi of t that we have over there. This term phi of t is proportional to the modulating signal in the case of a phase modulation, and in the frequency modulation, what is proportional to the modulating signal is not phi of t but its derivative, or what is the same, phi of t is proportional to the integral of the modulating signal. In any case, the relationship between the modulating signal, that is here, and the modulated signal of the phase or frequency modulation is clearly non-linear. And this non-linearity makes difficult the analytical analysis of some characteristics of the angle modulations. For instance, it's difficult to analyze the spectrum of an angle modulation. There is only possible to obtain results for very simple modulating signals, but in general, it's difficult to make a generic analysis. For instance, there is not a uh, general expression for the spectrum of an arbitrary non-periodic deterministic signal. In this case, well, the only thing that is available is an heuristic rule, that is the Carson's rule, that can be used to estimate the bandwidth of the modulated signals. And the Carson rule says that the bandwidth of a frequency or phase modulated signal is approximately equal to 2 times the value of the modulation index plus 1 times the bandwidth in hertz of the modulating signal, the bandwidth in hertz of the information that we are transmitting. Looking at this expression, it is evident that with respect to, uh, to the bandwidth of the modulating signal, now the higher the value of the modulating index, the higher the bandwidth of the modulated signal. And we can have several times the bandwidth of the information signal. This means that we can have an expansion of the bandwidth if we have relatively high values for the modulation index beta. To expand the bandwidth of angle modulations by increasing the modulation index has an advantage, and this advantage is noise immunity. As it happened with the spectrum, it is difficult to analyze the signal-to-noise ratio 
in angle modulations because of the non-linearity between the information and the modulated signals. However, it's possible to establish some approximations and the general result is that the signal-to-noise ratio for angle modulations when compared with the signal-to-noise ratio of a baseband transmission is proportional to this reference with these elements that we have here. Proportional to a number alpha, that is 1 for a phase modulation and 3 for a frequency modulation, then it is proportional to the ratio between the power of the modulating signal and the square of the, uh, of the range of this modulating signal, and what is more relevant with respect to the modulation index, we have a quadratic, uh, a quadratic uh, effect here. The signal to noise ratio is proportional to the square of the modulation index. Looking at this expression, we can see that the higher the value of the modulation index, the higher the signal to noise ratio. And there is a quadratic relationship. This result is correct as long as the signal to noise ratio is above a, a, of a given threshold. And this threshold depends also on the modulation index. It's 20 times the modulation index plus 1. As long as the signal to noise ratio is above this threshold, we have the advantage of having a relatively high signal to noise ratio by increasing the values of the modulation index. This is the main advantage of the uh, angle modulations, noise immunity for high values of the modulation index.